Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to talk about Paragon, the third person MOBA from Epic Games. I've been lightly following this game as it's kind of an interesting platform to try and bridge the gap between traditional shooter controls and a MOBA universe. Now granted, other games like Smite have already attempted this, but just something about the way that Smite looked visually didn't really interest me. This being made by Epic Games on the Unreal Engine, uh, it looks fantastic. Lots of cool particle effects, a very high poly gone count on the characters and some very very advanced shader technology now if you're already intrigued by the visuals and you like mobas you can play this game on march 18th if you buy in with a founders pack the cheapest founder pack is 20 dollars and the website kind of clearly displays what different benefits you get you basically get more characters if you buy more founders packs but I believe you will be able to unlock all of this stuff through in-game achievements as well. In fact, uh, the cards and the other abilities that you get that upgrade your character in this will all be achievable only through in-game progression and you're not going to be able to buy your way to victory. Now for the most part this game is not trying to redefine what a MOBA is. It's got one map, three lanes, a jungle in the center, You've got towers, you've got mobs pushing each lane. It's a five versus five competitive game mode. And there's lots of characters with different abilities that complement or counter each other, and they upgrade themselves as the game progresses. One interesting twist on things though is that the characters you play have card decks. So basically when you get card points, you upgrade, you get more experience, you can unlock new cards that improve your character and improve your health, your lifesteal, how much mana you have, um, your basic attack damage, that kind of stuff. But uh, if you want, when you start to rank up, you can start to acquire more custom cards and start to custom craft your deck. So if you want to build a deck that's specifically geared just towards tanking or just towards massive damage and lifesteal, you can do that rather than having a more well-rounded basic deck. And the character I'm playing here is called Steel and he is a big tank and he's got some cool stun abilities and a super and he can actually do some decent damage if you spec him that way. Or you can spec him to just be full on tank and absorb a ton of damage. Uh, right here you'll see that we're actually attacking a tower, there's a hero defending it and uh, our minions have kind of clumped up. The towers actually do massive damage in this game, and should the tower start to focus fire on you, uh, it can be very hard to get away from it before it actually kills you, which is something that uh, I'm not used to with some of the MOBAs that I've played before. So uh, you just have to be really, really cautious about trying to attack the towers by yourself. In fact, it's almost impossible to take them on without some good minion backup, or unless you have a character on your team that's just some sort of massive tank, but uh, I haven't seen that happen yet. For the most part, you need your mobs there helping uh, to tank that damage while you attack the tower. Otherwise, it's just gonna wreck you quickly. Now, rather than having mounts in this game that you have to summon, you basically just activate your run mode and that does take a while to charge up. So it effectively just replaces the mount system. The difference being though, if somebody hits you or damages you while you're in your run mode, it will root you to the ground no matter what kind of attack it was for like a second or two. So uh, basically, you just don't wanna get caught out while you're in run mode and it can be a little bit tricky especially if you're trying to catch um, a character escaping if you're in run mode chasing after them to catch up to them and they hit you it'll just root you in place and then they'll be able to sort of get away from you faster so you just got to watch out for it and timing becomes very very important now though the game is very beautiful in this new 3d setting one thing did take a bit getting used to and that's the fact that your camera is pretty much glued to your character. You can't go off and look at the other part of the map and see what your teammates are up to or see if they're losing a fight, like if they're in a 2v1 battle, do, are they losing right off the bat, are they winning? You won't really be able to tell because all you have is your little mini map to look at in the upper right hand corner, where in other MOBAs you can usually uh, have the camera go free, check it out, see what's going on in the other part of the map. So that is a pretty significant difference and um, it does make you just have to kind of focus on what you're doing, which at times can be a little bit boring. So if you're coming at this game with a lot of other MOBA experience, that'll take some getting used to. Also, because this game is 3D and you can only see whatever your camera's focused on, people can sneak up behind you. And if you're not playing 
paying very, very close attention to that mini-map, you might miss it. Uh, players, as far as I know, will appear on the mini-map if they're within line of sight of your character. I don't know if that means that uh, they'll appear behind you even if you're not looking at them. Now rather than having a whole bunch of different base buildings that control different things about the minion spawnings in your base, uh, there's just three main towers before your core. And so these three towers, which are each lined up in their own lane, uh, if you take down the enemy team's tower, your base will start spawning basically super minions until that tower comes back up. But it's got a very, very long recharge time. It's something like 350 seconds when you take it down. So it's a very big advantage if you take down one of those towers. And the, the powerful minions that start coming at that point are so powerful that it's going to require um, at least one player from their team to try and stop them from attacking, if not more. So it is a huge deal if you take down one of these final towers on your enemy base. Now, if you look at the UI, which I don't think is in its final state, I think this is mostly just a placeholder UI at the moment, but you'll see at the bottom, uh, bottom center of the screen, on the left, there's my card rank, and on the right is my player rank. So player rank will upgrade your skills and give you just more powerful and more effective attacks. And then your card rank will give you more points to buy more cards that can better customize your character in certain ways like more attack damage, more mana, more health, more lifesteal, that kind of thing. So those two ranks um, will help you in different ways. And the class I'm playing right here is Gideon. He's a caster. Um, he's basically a glass cannon, has very good AoE effects. And he's also got a cool little teleport ability, which is very nice for catching up on people who are trying to escape. Um, it can be a little bit nerve wracking in this game just because the view distance is pretty long. It's different from like, you know, a top down viewing MOBA where if somebody goes off your screen, you feel a little bit more safety in that. But in this game, uh, if somebody's chasing you down, you just kind of see them behind you the whole time. And uh, if your character is faster than another character, it can be a little bit nerve wracking for that person who's trying to escape you. So uh, it is sort of funny in these like, rundown situations. I don't know if it's more interesting or less interesting than a traditional MOBA when it actually comes to player placement and stuff like that. Now, though we do have the traditional aiming system of a classic shooter game, which uh, supposedly should add a little bit more skill depth to the MOBA, I think there's a little bit of auto-aim with the targeting system here. Basically, you have a fairly large targeting reticle, and if that turns red on your target, then I think if you shoot or attack, it's pretty much guaranteed to hit your opponent. So you kind of have a bit of leeway there with how precise you need to be when aiming. I think this might take a little bit out of the skill. Um, it's always something that Epic can adjust and decide on how much skill they want in the aiming or if they just want to make it a little bit easier aiming so it's more about strategy rather than your absolute precision in this game. It's certainly an interesting new addition to the MOBA arena. The card system brings a little bit of newness to it. The 3D environment brings something a little bit new. Although I don't know if 3D is better for this type of game or if it's actually more of a hindrance, especially with the map system and not always being able to tell exactly what's going on with the rest of your team. Only time will tell. Um, I'm looking forward to playing with more players when this game launches on the 18th. It'll be easier to match make as I mostly had to play against bots to get this footage matchmaking just I don't think there's enough people in the game at the moment anyway I'm excited to see this game evolve and see what kind of cool strategies come out of five player set teams um, it could be an entertaining spectator sport as always guys thanks for watching and I'll see you next time this is level cap signing off